Hi, Chris DeGote here with Spatial Physics Systems. Today we're going to be doing a brief overview of Substation Design Suite for Inventor. Specifically, we'll be looking at the toolbars that will appear in Inventor once you install Substation Design Suite. And I'll be giving a brief description of what some of the things do. We're not going to get into any detail of how to use the tools necessarily, but this is just meant to be a walkthrough of the tools available for you and where to find them. So to start off, this is Inventor with Substation Design Suite loaded. And here we'll notice we have three tabs. We have Substation Design Suite, Above Grade Tools, and Below Grade Tools. So let's start with Substation Design Suite. You'll find some things in here, starting with Import Surface. And when we click on that, we get this pop-up. And this is where we would go if we wanted to import a 3D surface uh, here we're using Civil 3D, and we want to be able to import the surface into our Inventor model. This tool will allow us to do that by first exporting a LAN XML from Civil 3D, and then we can go here to select it and bring it into the model. Some other things, very useful things we'll find in here. Notice this Browse and Select button. These two look similar. The icons do look the same, sort of represents a bolt circle pattern, and that's exactly what these do. The first one will let us browse to any model we need containing a bolt circle pattern, such as an insulator. If we're wanting to uh, bring in and constrain an insulator to uh, a bus uh, support, we can do that. Or if the insulator is already existing in the model, we would use the Select tool. Now let's look at the Settings dialog we find within the substation design tab. Overall settings, this is where we'll go to tell the program if we want to use a template of our own. Now remember, substation design suite for Inventor does create parts and assemblies depending on the operation. It will use a generic uh, assembly or part template unless we specify our own. Now we might want to do this if our templates contain uh, certain I properties, uh, custom properties that we need in all of our parts and assemblies. And we can choose those templates here. We can dictate to the software the default length unit for bill of material reporting. We'll change that there. We can even change the default folders. Now again, Substation Design Suite for Inventor will create various parts and assemblies. So anytime we want to run a flexible conductor, it will create a part file for each conductor. And here we can change where those items are being saved. Now this, one of my favorite ones in this dialog, the prefix for automatically generated parts. So naming conventions are very important when using Inventor. So Substation Design Suite will allow us to append a prefix onto any parts created. Now here at Design Checks, this is where we find the tools to perform our design checks. Now the design checks that we can run in the models, phase to ground, phase to phase, and fence safety clearance. So this dialog you would use to prepare the model for the design checks, as well as perform the design checks themselves. And it contains the results in this last tab. Now here we have various BOM reporting tools. We can set different uh, statuses for items in the models. So if I click on there, so here's the tool we would use to designate something within our assembly as being added, removed, or existing. So this lends itself very well to a brownfield workflow. If we click on design checks here, this is going to bring us to utilitycontent.com. So here we would enter our login information to utility content. And we're going to talk about utility content in more detail here briefly. So here we can see the 
two calculators available on the site you can do corona counts as well as bus design calculations now moving on to the above grade tools tab here we'll find the tools to bring in different types of terminals different types of fittings now we can customize what appears here in the drop downs or we can choose to browse anywhere on our computer to find the models we wish to insert and here again the different bus fittings these are the tools we will use to generate our rigid and flexible conductor so here in the program we refer to rigid conductor as rigid bus routing now pay attention and I do suggest I encourage you to explore these drop-down menus you'll find a whole host of tools in these drop-downs here we can choose to run round bus flat bar angle and integral web once the runs are generated we can use the tool to edit the run delete the run or update the run should something in the model change now this next section referred to as cable routing this is for a flexible conductor there are many methods to run the conductor in the model we have pick two fittings we can pick 3d work points we can pick multiple fittings cylindrical surfaces and so on And similar to the rigid conductor, we can edit, delete, and update. Now we also have tools. Now anytime we're bringing something in using the software, uh, such as our fittings, they might not be rotated in the orientation we want them to be. So we can use the tool Rotate Items. Now we have another setting here. Now this is specific to our above grade tools. Now here is where we would choose the size conductor that we're going to run, whether it's flexible or rigid. Now all of this information is being pulled from a database that can be edited using our content editor. We do support dual conductor. bus tab this is where we choose what type of rigid conductor we want to use in the design whether it's round flat angle or integral web and we do support creation of damping cable now the damping cable is going to be created as a phantom part there's no real geometry about it but it will be counted in the bill of material if we want And for the lightning protection, this is where we designate the inner and outer angles of a, uh, a fixed angle or cone protection method. And then right below that, we'll find our rolling sphere protection inputs. And we'll find the lightning protection tools in this area. We have the tools to add our shield wire we can add default masks we can edit shield wire delete protection items these are the tools to select the masks or the mast top points we can unselect the mast and the top points and we have a tool we can show the mast you know, this is really good to verify our selections and of course there's where we go to create the rolling sphere or cone the last tab we see is our below grade tools here's where we access the tools to create the below grade cable generate ground grids and you'll see a lot of these buttons will open up more dialog boxes so I really encourage you to explore these dialogs and drop downs create equipment ground leads here again another dialogue with a lot of options for us 
We can auto route or use the interactive to really dictate the exact route we want those leads to take. Place ground taps, add ground rods, and delete items. Now, just like the previous two tabs, we do have a settings dialog. Now here we can affect the default ground grid spacing if we're generating our ground grid using this method. We can dictate that spacing here. We can choose the default ground grid element size in a similar fashion, ground lead sizing, and our ground rod sizes. For conduit, we can choose the size for our flexible conduits well as a rigid. We can change the settings for our trench as well as our cable. This section is where we'll go to create trench. We can create trench from sketch. We can start new runs, add straights, tees, and other intersection types. And the last section is where we'll find the tools to create conduit. So we can add drops, 45 degree elbows, 90 degree elbows, flexible conduit, and so on. Now another thing you'll notice that also appears after installing uh, SDS for Inventor is a tab in our browser called SBS Cloud Model Editor. Now, if you don't see this tab and you've installed Substation Design Suite, you'll need to go to the View tab, drop down on User Interface, and select SBS Cloud Model Editor. Now, we'll use the same login information that we used uh, when we accessed utilitycontent.com just a minute ago. Now here we can do a lot of things with this tool. Uh, obviously we can access the information on utility content from within Inventor, so there's not really a need to exit Inventor and pull up a separate web browser to access the, this content. We have a menu button. We can download pre-built models. We can also access the configurators we have available. Now we'll also use the same tool to apply intelligence to the models. Now if you've been using uh, Substation Design Suite for Inventor for some time, you'll remember the model editor it now resides with the SBS Cloud Model Editor. And we'll find the tools to add the intelligence through here. So here's where we tell the model what type of component it is, and so on. We can designate the required geometry, terminal work geometry, design check information, and so on. All right, that concludes our brief walkthrough of the tools found within Substation Design Suite for an